Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how scale degrees work in music. As you get into music theory, this is a term and a concept that comes up early on because scale degrees are totally fundamental to the way music works because they are the labels we use to describe and understand intervals, meaning the intervals between notes. And since intervals are absolutely essential in music because they make organized sound possible, scale degrees are equally important. So that's what we'll be looking at here. And once you understand scale degrees, you're pretty much unstoppable. Now, if you haven't seen a couple of my videos before this, definitely check those out. The links are in the notes below because they explain some of the concepts that lead up to scale degrees, like how there are only 12 notes in music that can be rearranged into three patterns we call the holy trinity of music, and that these patterns then intersect to form an intricate array on the guitar, which we then use to play the instrument, moving from fret to fret and string to string to pick out other note patterns in every key. And along the way, throughout each of these videos, it's all been fairly simple because these otherwise invisible abstract concepts are now concrete with the aid of color. So you don't have to picture everything within your mind's eye only, but you can actually see it all right there with your own two eyes in vivid detail. And again, with this new kind of vision, it's clear that music is all about patterns. Regular repeating patterns that are natural, simple, and totally predictable. Patterns that have always been audible, but are now plain to see as well. And of all the patterns that are possible, the three most important by far are the chromatic scale, the major scale, and the circle of fifths that together form the foundation of music. And this foundation or framework is elegant too, because it turns out that all three patterns are just variations of one another, where each is produced by its own set of intervals, where the intervals used are what really set them all apart. To show you what I mean, here's another view of these three patterns again, only this time shown as concentric rings. At the center is the chromatic scale, repeated through a number of octaves. This is the most basic sequence of notes where every pitch is separated by a half-step interval. Then in the next ring, the major scale is formed as a subset of notes, made from a pattern of whole steps and half steps, so that some notes of the chromatic scale are skipped. And finally, around the edge is the circle of fifths, where every fifth note of the major scale is shown, as the name circle of fifths suggests. In this way, every pattern is derived from the one before it, all through the use of intervals. So now it only makes sense to look more closely at these intervals since they clearly hold the key to a deeper understanding of music. And specifically, we'll dive into the intervals that make up the major scale because this pattern is what brings everything together and explains how scale degrees really work. To illustrate, let's start with the C major scale as an example, though as you'll soon see, these same principles apply to every key since all 12 keys are symmetrical. This scale is formed from a basic pattern of whole step and half step intervals, shown here using W's and H's, where you start on one C note in the chromatic scale and then work your way to another C note, playing only some of the notes in between like this, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. It's easy enough. And to label these notes, we give each one its own letter name. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. But because the intervals are also important in this pattern, it turns out that they have labels too, which musicians mark with a set of numbers they call scale degrees, so-called because they measure each degree or interval in the major scale. So as you play the scale, you can think of it in a couple of ways. One, as a specific sequence of notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, or two, as a general pattern of intervals, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which happens to start on C. Both patterns produce the same result, but you get there in different ways. While the letters spell out the exact pitches to play, the scale degrees plot a more general path through space by highlighting the distance between the notes rather than the notes themselves. And as a result, these scale degrees are a more universal tool for analyzing any key, a tool you can use like a musical ruler of sorts that you can shift from one key to the next, measuring the distance between notes and marking the pitches to play, whether you're in the key of C or the key of G or D, etc. 
it's cool, though clearly it's not the kind of ruler you normally see meant to measure things like a pencil or a rock. Instead, it's a special musical ruler marked by only a few unevenly spaced numbers that give it a funky look. But although it looks strange, this weird design is totally natural because it's caused by the intervals that form the major scale itself, which is why it's unlike a normal number line. So the integers aren't evenly spaced here, but are offset by large and small gaps instead to reflect the whole step and half step intervals that make this scale. Or at least the main scale degrees are spaced this way, those that mark the major scale. Though really, every interval of the chromatic scale has its own label, including the ones that are skipped in the major scale. And these other scale degrees are simply written as numbers with extra sharp and flat symbols, just like you see with the letter names for notes. The same basic idea applies. The scale degree just below 2 is flat 2, and just below 3 is flat 3, and just below 5 is flat 5, and so on. Actually, I should mention that as a convention, the sharp and flat symbols are written after a given letter name, but before a given scale degree. For example, D flat versus flat two. It's just what musicians do. Anyway, this sequence of scale degree numbers and labels definitely looks odd at first, but it makes sense once you understand its logic and the fact that these numbers essentially favor the major scale, although every interval is labeled to fill in the gaps. So this musical ruler forms a full and complete set, which we can now use to map out the intervals on the guitar to understand the fretboard even better. So we can navigate this matrix even faster and with total confidence. To see what I mean, let's apply these numbers to the fretboard, starting with the key of C, and you'll find that it's easy. All you have to do is align the number one with every C note, and then the other scale degrees fall into place forming a stack of musical rulers, if you will, that are staggered on the different strings. So you can play this pattern anywhere you'd like, as one long sequence on a single string, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and since C is one, we can just count up to seven and then end at one again. Or we can play this scale in segments across multiple strings like this. Or we can even repeat this pattern in different positions up and down the fretboard, like this. Only now the scale degrees illuminate these patterns even more clearly because they highlight the intervals used to play each scale. In other words, they emphasize the whole steps and half steps that make up the major scale, inherently showing the distance between notes, which informs how far your fingers have to move across the fretboard. So now it's even more obvious why the guitar is such a brilliant design and why you can play patterns so quickly, because the fretboard allows you to cut through space with almost impossible speed by putting otherwise distant intervals in close proximity so you can leap between them in only a fraction of the time. For example, on any given string, intervals one and three are separated by two whole step intervals, just as you'd expect. One whole step, two whole step, three. But on two strings that are stacked, the physical distance between them is contracted and relatively small. So one gap is long while the other gap is short. And as a result, you can move between these points more swiftly, jumping from one to the other in a flash, as if swept through a kind of wormhole. It's pretty far out, actually. And since all 12 keys are symmetrical, it gets even better because you can apply this pattern to all 12 keys. You just have to shift the scale degrees so that the number one realigns with a different note, and bam, you're in a new key whether it's F or C or D, etc., So that you can see and hear this for yourself, I'm gonna play the major scale in three different keys. And as I go, follow along by counting the scale degrees that highlight the intervals in each pattern. And notice how we can play such a wide range of pitches in such a small space by playing each scale in segments across multiple strings, guided, of course, by the scale degrees. The key of C. the key of D flat. The key of D.
Okay, so we just moved through three of the keys, C, D flat, and D, to give you a feel for how these scale degrees are consistent in each key. But what's beautiful is that the same perfect symmetry extends through all 12 keys, which would take more time to show you than we have in this video. So if you want to see them for yourself, check out my online course that covers all of this in even more detail. The link is in the notes below. Anyway, this video gives you a nice introduction to scale degrees, the numbers we use to label intervals in music. And as you've seen, they're important because these labels help to illustrate and explain the patterns we use to play the guitar or any instrument for that matter. Scale degrees are essential to everything you'll see and do going forward. And really, this is only the beginning because there's a lot more to these special numbers than we've seen so far, which we explore in other videos. But next, it's important that we step back to really understand all of these symbols that musicians use. That is, all the letters and numbers and sharps and flats to clarify exactly how they're used and what they mean to fully master the vocabulary and logic of music which is what we'll do in the next video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.